Hello, Dallin Elementary School students. This is Mr. Kwan. Welcome to our March assembly. During the assembly, Grade Two students will sing our Dallin School song. Grade Four students will share a song titled "Heal the World" by Michael Jackson. In hope of the war in Ukraine will end soon. Grade one students will inform us importance of sustainability, and grade five students will raise the awareness of human rights with their monologues. Then I will announce our March Student of the Month awards, and Miss Michelle will celebrate the students whose birthday are in March.
would say stuff like, "Mama, we are living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. I'm not used to working since my family is rich. And but when Papa died, life took a big turn. I felt disgusted, but sometimes thankful. For example, since once I cringe as I try to imagine having no privacy. We're lucky," said Isabel solemnly. In some camps, we had to go to ditches. I looked, I looked down, swallowed, and nodded. Suddenly, thankful for something. I think I had understood that sometimes we could hope, even Hi, though. Hi, I am Esperanza. I am thirteen years old. I had used to be a rich and wealthy girl before my father was killed. My father had died because some bandits came and killed him because they thought. He was like all the other landowners, rude and treat their workers like animals. But no, my papa was a kind-hearted man. In Mexico, women could not own anything without a man. There was this guy called Dio Luis. He wanted to marry my mama, but my mama refused to marry him. As Brenda, if we are still in Mexico, I would have to marry Theo Luis. So we have a choice: either we stay miserable together, or stay with Theo Luis and be miserable. She is very sad. They have to live like this. As Brenda is very sad. Uh, they have to live like this, and she is complaining about this to Mama. And Mama was very disappointed. In the end, Miguel caught up with me and. Pulled my arm around. He said, "What is the matter with you?" I stamped my foot and turned away. I retorted back angrily, "Is this the better life you left Mexico for? Is it? How is California better than Mexico? I cannot see how here they treat us like cows and horses. And Isabel will never win Queen of May, and you lost your job because we are Mexicans." I heard Miguel's voice in the distance, but I didn't answer. When I got to the end of one row, I moved up to another. I tightened my fist and closed my eyes tight in frustration. Miguel, you do not understand. You are still a second-class citizen because you act like one, letting them take advantage of you like that. Why don't you go to your boss and confront him? Why don't you speak up for yourself and your talents? The words stopped me as if someone had slapped my face. Papa, words wait a little while. And the fruit will fall into your hand, but I was tired of waiting. I've been tired of Mama being sick and Apolita being far away, and Papa's dead. I thought about Papa. Tears flowed from my eyes, and I suddenly felt tiredness. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Joshua, and we're meant to make a monologue、uh, for a specific character. So I'm going. I made a monologue, and I'm going to be reading it now. <clears throat> I'm not happy with how Mexico、uh, and I am treated. So now I'm trying and planning to go to America. While planning to do so,、uh, Esperanza catches me packing his、uh, packing my things, and she asks, "Miguel, where are you going?" I reply, "I'm leaving for the U.S. I've been a, I've been a worker for way too long." Esperanza is in shock. What? You're leaving for the U.S.? Miguel, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm leaving for the U.S. because I heard the life there is、uh, much better than Mexico. As me, as I am almost done packing, Esperanza says, "Miguel, what are you doing? The life there is a lot harder than in Mexico. Stop and unpack everything." Hi, my name is Miguel. I am 16 years old, and I work as a servant for Miss Ramona Abuelita and Esperanza. It was a normal night when some men came from Oklahoma. They told my boss they would work for half the pay. My boss hired all of them, and I went. I went to him and pleaded for him to let me work, but he offered me to ditch ditches. Ditches instead. I said to my boss, "Let me stay and work, please. I'll work for extra hours." But he was sure of his decision. I was sad. I had done all I could, but he still fired me. I went back to the camp, saddened. I sat down at the chair. Some men came down from Oklahoma. They offered to do the job for half the pay. The railroad hired all of them. Some of them have never even worked on a motor before. Everyone was sad, but Esperanza was mad. Because I didn't stand up for myself, but what could I do? If I stood up for myself, I would probably be arrested and maybe even sent back to Mexico. When Hortensia, when Hortensia asked me 
a question about how I got so dirty. I told them what had happened to me today, but unexpectedly, it just led to an argument with us friends. She didn't understand me, and that just made me more mad. She also thought she was still a princess and that she could still that she could live with dignity. She was acting like a bratty child. Then I realized that she wouldn't understand how I felt about my work and that Esperanza still hadn't learned that she wasn't a princess anymore. Then I also realized that I would have to work harder to overcome all my dreams. I told her that if we had to stay in Mexico and I had to marry Theo Luis, we would have one choice, to be apart and miserable. Here we have two choices, to be together and miserable or to be together and happy. I choose to be happy. As I heard Esperanza answered happy, I gave her a slight smile, telling her how lucky we are and to be grateful for the favors bestowed upon us. I patted her head gently and left the room. Once I left the room, I looked out the window and saw that the sun was setting. Time was passing by fast. Tomorrow I have to go to the fields and pack the grapes. I got back up and unpacked our stuff and casually sang while unpacking, but then, Esperanza yelled with her high-pitched voice and said, Mama, we're living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. After she said that, I told her to sit down to talk for a bit. In the conversation, I gave her two important options. To go back to Mexico and be with that cruel man, or to be together and happy without him. And she silently said, happy. I was happy because she picked the right choice. And I told her how lucky we are to have somewhere to live. I gave her a hug and left the room to go to sleep. The next this month, we continue to acknowledge students who have demonstrated to be the self-directed and productive learners. The winners from our lower elementary school are KG students, James and Sulei, Grade 1 students Stephen and James, Grade 2 students To Take and Shiloh Lee. Congratulations to our Lowell Elementary School winners. The winners from our Upper Elementary School are Grade 3 students Mo Ping Cho and Wei Yan, Grade 4 students Yamit and Lo Wan, Grade 5 students KK and Heather. Congratulations to our upper elementary school winners. In addition, we have winners from the special subjects class. In Myanmar studies class, the winners are grade one student Emma and grade five student KK. Congratulations. In our class, the winners are grade one student Yaya and grade four student Daniel. In PE class, the winners are Grade 1 student Shiloh Lee and Grade 3 student Wei Yan. In music class, the winners are Grade 1 student Marvin and Grade 2 student Ken Ken. In ICT class, the winners are Grade 3 student Lei and Grade 4 student Jenny. Congratulations to all the winners who have demonstrated to be the self-directed and productive learners.